Hello, and welcome to WinCC Group's Crypto Pals Guided Tour. My name is Eli. I'll be your guide. In this video, we'll be looking at challenge 15 from set 2. Easily the easiest of these challenges, but uh, one with quite a bit of significance. We've already hinted at this a little bit, because back in challenge 9, we implemented PKCS7 padding, and as it happened, we actually uh, implemented unpadding at the same time, because we wanted to be able to round trip uh, padded strings back to their original values. So there's not going to be a lot to do for this one, but we can use these test vectors here to make sure that we've got everything right. So let's go ahead and do that. And if we go back here and look at our definition for strip BKCS7, this is from uh, challenge9.py. We can see that it works exactly how you would expect it to. It uh, first takes the last byte and then, um, you know, checks that the padding is valid. If it's not valid, we raise this padding error, which is a custom exception um, that needs to be imported in order to be caught. Although you could also just catch exception, but that's a bad practice because it can catch things you didn't mean to catch. And so here we go. This is our, uh, this is our strip PKCS7 function, and we will use it here but we also need to import padding error, of course. Yeah, let me actually just copy this in, to be honest with you. Um, I think that will be the easiest way to do this. It has valid padding and produces the result ice ice baby. Try strip pkcs7 on that byte string. And uh, if we get a padding error, that's expected. So we will just pass in that case. But if we don't get a padding error, then we re-raise A, uh, a real exception. Yeah, it always feels a little bit illegal to me to be raising an exception inside of a try-catch, but that is the proper thing to do here. And then we'll try the other uh, test vector as well. And uh, I guess if we do put exceptions for the other tests, we might as well do one for this uh, test as well. So there we go. Now they're all consistent. And we could break this out into a, uh, a function. Uh, BS stands for byte string, of course. And that actually allows us to be one line terser, which is quite nice. So let's rewrite this now. And we can use a little bit of Vim magic for that. There we go. Whatever editor you're using, I hope that you can do tasks like that as quickly as that, because if not, you are wasting valuable minutes of your life. And let's make sure that this actually works as expected. And it does. So there we go. And uh, I could leave things here, and frankly, I'm kind of tempted to, but uh, I feel like I would be remiss to end this video without mentioning um, that this is what unpadding looks like when you're an attacker. When you're a defender, it is uh, not so easy. Um, and just to illustrate that, let me show you one example, which is from Bear SSL, uh, developed by my colleague Tama, outstanding library um, that I uh, frequently reference. There it is, CBC padding. That's where it is. And uh, there is clearly a lot more involved in doing this in constant time than uh <laughs> than we've looked at here uh yeah compare compare this to you know all of all of this 
Um, and I'm not going to discuss it in detail. Tamak could do that better than I could. Um, but I will <laughs> assign this as recommended reading for anyone who's interested in what this looks like from the point of view of the defender rather than the attacker, which is what we focus on in these challenges. But that will do it for challenge 15. Uh, I hope that you found this interesting and maybe helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.